Hey guys, welcome back to ADSR Massive Tutorials. Make sure you get yourself subscribed to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. This is part two of the feature we've been doing this month, looking at kind of velocity, key tracking and trigger random, and how we can use them to design sounds with Massive, and also just doing some tutorials to help you get your head around how, how they work. Um, uh, and the ways in which you can sort of affect the sound so with key tracking, trigger random, velocity so um, we did a kind of drum sequence last week and this week I'll show you how to make this kind of like pad, I call it an expressive pad because I've got a lot of key tracking and velocity kind of controllers here affecting the sound so if I hit C3 quite lightly I get that kind of sound. If I hit C4 but like apply much more velocity or then C2 I'm getting completely different sounds and well not completely different sounds but there's a lot of variation going on there um, and that's just kind of showing you just how you know how expressive you can get with these kind of modulators so going to start and build this sound from scratch here so create a new sound in massive and I'll oscillate a one slot I'm going to go for this cicada wavetable which is in the effects chord section which is a really interesting kind of section of wavetables in massive because all of these are very experimental kind of uh, wavetables so cicada quite interesting sound really and if I start moving around this wavetable position Yeah, where the kind of name Cicada, they get the name for this wavetable from really and I turn it to bend plus minus you know it's quite a crazy sound so I'm going to use this, pitch it up by one octave turns into a bit more of a bass tone and keeping it in the bend minus plus mode I'm going to apply some key tracking to this wavetable so we get some variation depending on the pitch of the note that's playing back so using this key tracking macro down here click and drag this to the first modulation slot on the wavetable position of this cicada click and drag down so now C2 kind of get like an LFO and a C4 a bit more of like a kind of mid-range bass tone uh, I'm going to apply the same kind of modulation to this intensity control so We sound quite cool. Key key tracking again over to the intensity control, click and drag down, maybe about halfway. And so we're getting just kind of like a lot of variation in the sound just depending on what kind of pitch we're playing. So I mean if you wanted like a solid bass tone, it's not necessarily sort of the kind of sound design you'd be looking at but if you want to get experimental or do some kind of ex expressive sort of sounds or some pads and stuff um, this kind of thing's pretty cool so I'm going to bring in another oscillator now uh, I'm going to keep a sawtooth wave here and pull the intensity down I think I might apply some velocity as well to this saw click and drag this velocity macro control first modulation slot in the wave table position at this oscillator 2, click and drag down so mute oscillator 1 for now so a light kind of key press get more of a sawtooth harder, I get more of that square wave in there as well so also going to apply some key tracking to this oscillator so key tracking and to the intensity control, click and drag down so basically as we've kind of discussed before these intensity controls, as long as the mode is in spectrum on these oscillators, the intensity control is a bit like a low pass filter so you kind of roll all that top end off so with that in mind, applying this key tracking control click and drag down 
It basically means the higher up the keyboard I play, this intensity control is going to move down here. So it's quite a cool sort of thing to apply really because it means as we start getting really high pitched sounds, we're automatically rolling some of that top end off that oscillator um, and that potentially kind of harsh sort of high frequencies that you get when you start playing like, you know, C6, C7 notes. So, um, so with that set up, turn on oscillator 3 now, turn on oscillator 1 again. And um, this is going to be a square sort again. I'm going to create a bit of a chord here though. So I'm going to go plus 5 on the pitch. Maybe 4.90, detune it slightly. And uh, I'm going to do the same kind of velocity modulation here on this oscillator 3. It's a light key press, get more of a sawtooth. Press a bit harder and then get that sort of square wave come into it. And um, take roll some of the top end of this oscillator off. Around here and same thing again, the key tracking macro over here. Click and drag down, so. Rolling some of that top end off. So that's without the key tracking. So, you know, it's just a nice bit of control over the sound. If we start playing some really high kind of note pitches, then, you know, we're sort of taming that high frequency automatically without having to do any automation or EQing or anything like that. So, so I want to set up some more kind of modulation on oscillator 2 and oscillator 3 just to give us a bit more expression. So, for oscillator 2, I'm just going to solo oscillator 2 for now. I'm going to use an LFO here, or performer even, to modulate the amp of this oscillator 2. So, I'm going to take the amp of this down for now. Click and drag this crosshair over to the amp modulation slot on oscillator 2. Click and drag up so we've got full modulation applied. And let's set this LFO up, change it to a performer, and um, I'm going to sync it and uh, take the ratio to 1 over 4 and move this X phase sequence to the top and change the curve as well, just a more of a plucky, kind of tighter envelope. Quite nice. And then what I'm going to do is to make this how we had it before, kind of velocity sensitive control really. So take the amp of this LFO down, so now we won't hear anything. And then click and drag the velocity modulator to the amp of this LFO or this performer. Click and drag up. So now if we press the key really lightly, we hardly get any sound, a bit harder. So we've got this velocity sensitive LFO. So if we bring oscillator one back in. And again, that expression with just like lighter keys and sort of harder keys and stuff. So I'm going to do a similar thing with oscillator 3. So I'm just going to solo it again so you hear it a bit more kind of clearer. And um, this time, click and drag the crosshair of this third LFO slot to the amp of oscillator 3. And with the amp down to zero, click and drag up to maybe about halfway round. Um, I'm going to use the first LFO slot for to modulate some filters. So why I've left this one kind of for now. So yeah, LFO3, change it to a stepper this time. And I'm going to sync the stepper to the ratio to 1 over 12. So we're going to get quite an interesting sort of rhythm now because we're almost changing this to like a triplet sort of pattern. So obviously with no values applied in the stepper, we're not going to get any sound out of oscillator 3. So let's just do snap to grid and just almost just... Just apply some some kind of almost random but like plenty of variation in the steps. A 
it sounds pretty cool and um, what we did with this performer here do this stepper take the amp down and use the velocity to control the amp of the LFO so light key press no real sound Uh, and if we turn on oscillator 2 again, I've got s kind of slightly different amounts of modulation applied to these. So we're just going to get some even more variation. So bring in oscillator 1 again. So let's go ahead and set up some of these filters now. So um, in filter one slot, we can have a DAF filter. With the resonance quite high, it gives us quite a nice kind of tone. And in filter two, we're gonna have a high pass four. Bring the volume of this filter up. And I'm going to change the routing of these filters slightly. So I'm going to bring it from, at the moment it's in parallel. So this basically means it's passing through both of these filters kind of like at the same volume really equally. And if I move it to serial, it means it's going to pass through filter one, then through filter two, and then to the output. So I'm going to have this halfway. So kind of getting a bl blend of both that that routing. And And that's kind of the way we've set up here, unless we start playing around with this mix slider, because at the moment it's all the way to mix one, so we're not really going to get any of filter two. So so what we can do here to give us quite a nice amount of variation is to use the trigger random modulator to modulate the kind of mix of these two filters. And uh, trigger random is probably one of the lesser used modulators in Massive, um, but can be really sort of creative um, and just give you some quite interesting kind of textures and sounds that you wouldn't ordinarily think to sort of do. So basically what this is going to do, if I kind of click and drag that mod modulator, drop in the first modulation slot in the mix of the two filters, and now I'm going to get random values depending on how, how much modulation I apply anywhere between like up here all the way to mix one and kind of like two thirds of the way down to mix two at the filters. Getting quite a lot, lot of variation. I mean, you could tone it down and just push some modulation up here. So you're just getting a kind of slight variation in the sort of filters, but Again, it's just for pads and kind of expressive playing. It's, you know, it's kind of almost doing your automation for you, you know, like. And another thing I wanted to do here was set up a, a kind of LFO on the cutoff frequency of the daft filter because Sounding pretty cool. So LFO one, drag the crosshair of this to the cutoff frequency, filter one, and click and drag up. So applying this kind of a modulation. And I'm going to change the curve here actually. Move the X fade curve kind of a little bit up here. And rather than have a sine wave, I'm going to use this vibrato wave two joule, which is quite interesting wave really. So, um, and then, yeah, quite interesting when we kind of move that LFO rate around. So, um, I was going to use some key tracking to control the LFO rate, which is a great use of key tracking to uh, get variations in the kind of LFO rate depending on the note pitch. So, now if I play like a C2. 
getting all this key tracking going on here as well, but I'm also getting a slower LFO rate on that cutoff frequency. If I play a C4 note, much faster LFO rate, so. Put the amp of this, oscillate one down a bit. It's kind of just strengthening that, you know, if we're hitting a key light or if we're hitting it further down the keyboard or higher up, we're just getting not completely different sounds, but so much variation that it just makes for a really interesting sort of, I guess like soundscape -y sort of sound really. So I'm just going to sort of finish the sound off now with some effects. So I'm going to put a delay in the first effects slot. just kind of gives the sound a little bit of a sort of tail and just a little bit more spacey and this damp feature here on the, the delay kind of like a high frequency of the delay so what we've kind of talked about with key tracking and stuff previously use this key tracking here control the damp and I know we're kind of reducing the tops as we go further up the keyboard with these intensity controls and the key tracking modulation. Here, like what we're going to do is applying this key tracking is the higher the note pitch, get a bit more high frequency in that delay, low down, get a, bit, a little bit less, which again, you know, it's pretty nice. And hopefully, this is just strengthening your kind of understanding of key tracking, velocity, and uh, trigger random and how they can sort of you know affect the sound and you can use them for sound design with massive so final effect I'm gonna use a flanger negative pull this dry wet down to about a third of the way feedback apply some velocity to this feedback so notice you know, it goes a bit crazy when it goes right up there, but we could just have a bit of velocity on there. So that's a sound set up there, like a really expressive pad or sequence, if you like, that's kind of very sensitive to kind of key tracking and velocity. And, um, yeah, hopefully just kind of helping you kind of develop your understanding of these modulators and how they can affect the sound a bit more. So, Right, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Any questions, please get in touch. And um, yeah, get yourself over to the Massive Synth website, massivesynth.com. Check out tons more tutorials on Native Instruments Massive on there. And hope to see you again soon. All right, cheers. Bye.